What a marvelous message and song this morning. He touched me. And if you've ever been touched by the Master, He's definitely made you whole. God our Father, we come in the name of He that is able. God, we come in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you, O oh God, for every good and perfect gift that comes from the above. God, forgive us where we fail you and come short of your glory, O oh God. And God, God, we ask, uh, well, we just thank you, first of all, God, uh, for just keeping us all week long, O oh God. And now on this your day, O oh God, you have allowed us to worship you in spirit and in truth, O oh God. Thank you that our family, O oh God, was still together, O oh God. Uh, thank you, God, that uh, your mercy, O oh God, been new this morning, oh God. And God, we thank you for health and strength, oh God. <clears throat> God, we ask now that you would minister to us in these few moments, oh God. Master, let us hide behind your desk, oh God, this sacred desk, that we may declare your word as truth, oh God. And Master, let it be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Order our steps, God, according to your word, oh God. And Father, we'll give you glory, we'll give you honor, we'll give you praise, for it is all in the name of he that is able to, in the name of Jesus Christ we pray, amen, amen. of it, and as long as you were winding it, 
whoever was doing the whining was in control. And I would argue sometimes life feels like we're tossed this way, tossed that way. We're turning and tossing and turning and turning. But I want to argue that God still sits high and he still looks down low. He, he is still in charge of the turning in our lives. This was the uh, predicament that the children of Israel found themselves. Uh, uh, they find themselves in this state of bondage. And Isaiah is the word, that uh, he is the prophetic word uh, for the nation of that day. And, uh, uh, verses 1 through, 1 through 39 uh, and, and verses 40 on uh, divides the whole book of Isaiah. But here uh, the Bible says that I, as Isaiah declared unto them, comfort ye my people, said the Lord. He says that I come that I may breathe upon you a word from the Lord. And it's the Lord's word is that I want you to know that God still knows. God is still listening. God is still available unto you. And I would argue, my brothers and sisters, in the midst of this passage that Isaiah wants us to know that there is strength uh, in our lives when we put our trust in God, no matter how weak we find ourselves, God is a present help, even in the time of troubles. We who believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ knows that there are benefits from waiting upon the Lord. I would suggest, my brothers and sisters, in the context of, of, of this writing, uh, Isaiah is, is challenging uh, the children of Israel to remind them that the Messiah will come. Uh, your deliverance will come. What you're going through right now, it will come unto you. And uh, uh, no matter how dark it is, no matter how far it seems, and, and, and yet we as Christians today, we have to understand to know that because he came one time, we know that he is coming back again. His word declares that unto us. I want to suggest, my brothers and sisters, uh, that in the troubles that they faced, they began to cry out. They began to talk one to another. And I want to suggest, my brothers and sisters, uh, uh, that, that somehow, sometimes life in all of its trials, uh, life in all of its tribulations. Uh, sometimes, my brothers and sisters, it causes us to lose sight just on who God really is. Sometimes we give lip service to certain scriptures, but do we really believe them? I would argue, my brothers and sisters, sometimes there comes a point on your, in your journey with the Lord that you either got to confess up or sit down. I suggest to my brothers and sisters, uh, the writer here, he, uh, he recognizes the troubles that they were uh, experiencing. And uh, verse 27 uh, begins with this uh, complaint. And they, they began to cry. Uh, and the people uh, said of God uh, that, that they began to complain against God. Uh, Why do you so, Jacob, and speak, O Israel, for my way is hidden from the Lord, and, uh, and, my, and my right is disregarded by God. Uh, notice here the language that uh, they use in talking about God. Uh, they, they, they set this thing up as if God was somehow playing, uh, playing hide and go seek with them. That God had sent them on a journey and somehow left them all by themselves. Where, oh Jacob, why call upon him? Uh, does he not care? Uh, does he not know where we are? Does he disregard us in the midst of it? I would argue, my brothers and sisters, sometimes there are certain situations in our lives that we wonder, where is God in the midst of it? Sometimes, y'all, the pain and the sorrow of our trial and tribulation makes us wonder, how long, God, will you come unto us? And the text uh, makes it no difference in this way uh, that they cry out unto God. And, and, and the Bible says Isaiah hears their cries. And notice here, he, he acknowledged them. He acknowledged how they feel, but he does not affirm what they say. And I would argue, my brothers and sisters, sometimes your feelings uh, get caught up in the truth. And, uh, uh, he recognized and, and, and he rebuked them for their complaining against God. And, and, uh, and, I, and I'm going to argue, my brothers and sisters, uh, uh, he, he says unto them, you know, why do you say that God is happy? Uh, I, I, I got a word for you to 
let you know that God hasn't forsaken you, nor has he forgotten you. But before I tell you my prophetic word, I feel like I got to remind you what God has already done. And every now and then, y'all, we need a, 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 a reminder uh, to recollect what God has done. Sometimes we're dealing with situations, but if we, if we just remember, God brought us through this thing before. God had made a way before. God had healed my body before. And, and, and Isaiah said that I, before you complain against God, he says, I want you to take time and remember what the Lord has already done for you. Isaiah says here that before I tell you what God is about to do, I want to, I want to take you back on a journey. And if you read the, the text, Isaiah is saying is that I, I'm not here to impart revelation in so much as I'm, I'm willing to impart recollection. Uh, that, that I want you to remember, review in your own minds. And, and there are things about God that you should already know about God. God is not hiding from you. God is not uh, deserting you. The, the problem Isaiah suggests is that it seems as though not that God has moved, but that you are looking in the wrong direction. I would argue, my brothers and sisters, sometimes uh, 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 we, if we're not careful, even in our society today, that our focus is on the Democratic Party and our focus is upon the Republican Party. But I would argue, my brothers and sisters, whatever God's going to do through America, he doesn't need the Republicans nor the Democratic Party. All he needs is if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and, and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Listen, I want to suggest, my brothers and sisters, that the United States need a healing. There needs to be a time when, when we all can come together. And I would argue, my brothers and sisters, nothing like a pandemic that will bring folk together. But I would argue, my brothers and sisters, it's just like man to bring about division and disciplefulness. <laughs> the Bible says here that he declares unto him uh, that, that God himself is directing. God himself is in charge of this situation. And, and uh, he says uh, that he deals with them in, 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 in verse uh, number 20, 27 and says, O Israel, my way is hidden from thee, and, and thy judgment is passed over from my God. And, Bible says, uh, 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 Isaiah begins to respond. He says uh, uh, that God has not forgotten you. God, God knows exactly where you are. He says, but have you forsaken your God? Have you taken time to call upon the name of your God? And I would argue, my brothers and sisters, I would argue that God has a way of showing up in the midst of showdowns. Uh, these people should have known that God has showed up before in their history. They're, uh, they're not by themselves in this because uh, the record is, is clear. If you read their history, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and, uh, and a bad, a bad nigga, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bible says that they were in a fiery furnace. But the God didn't deliver them out of the furnace, but he showed up in the midst of the furnace. And the Bible says that, that, that Noah one day was in the midst of a flood, but God showed up at the right time uh, to recommend and to light unto them what God was doing in their lives. I just want to suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, that God has a way of showing up. And if we recognize him, if we lift him up, my brothers and sisters, God will show up in our situations as well. I we'll suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, in this text, he, he makes sure that we understand who God is and how God works in our lives. And I would argue, my brothers and sisters, uh, my first point is that, uh, that if we're going to uh, fulfill this strategy, uh, then, then we, we've got to recognize uh, that God is sovereign. Uh, for the text says that he is the creator of the end of the earth. And, uh, this is found in verse 20, uh, 28. He says, Has thou not known? Has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. 
He says that I've got to have you understand that God is sovereign, that God is omnipotent. He has power over all of these things. He says if you really truly believe, uh, God himself will work it out on your behalf. And listen, uh, I would argue, my brothers and sisters, they ought to have known. Because even if you go back to the very first uh, verse of the Bible, the Bible says, in the beginning was God, and God created the heavens and the earth. And I want to suggest, my brothers and sisters, if he able to create it from the beginning, he's able to handle your problem. He's able to handle your situation. He's able to handle their situations. And the scriptures declares that God, who is our creator, says that the, uh, the one that creates a thing is greater than the thing that he created. And, and so he, he says unto them that, that I created you and, and God is greater than you. And, and if we recognize the power of our sovereign God, we recognize that he's able to deliver us. And the text says that uh, he, he, he declares unto them that, that there he is thou creator. And he says that uh, what can you find anything that God is not in charge of? Uh, the creator is the end of the earth, the text says. Uh, a thing going on in verse 28, he says, not only is God eternal, but he says God is omnipotent. That is that he has all power uh, in creation of the world and all that is a part of the world. And I want to suggest to you, uh, notice here, not just what God can do, but notice here what God cannot do. He says he does not faint. He does not grow weary. I don't care about you. I don't know about you, but we ought to praise God for what he cannot do. Praise God that he doesn't get tired. Praise God that he doesn't faint in the situations of life. And I would argue, my brothers and sisters, you may have situations in life that you don't understand, that you don't know how you're going to get through it, but beware that God is able to deliver. The text says uh, that if, if you just trust him, is what he's saying to the children of Israel. <clears throat> but I, I, want, I want to suggest, y'all, that we've got to be careful, y'all, that sometimes we think that our challenges are too big for God. But I want to suggest, y'all, that if you got anything that's too big for God, uh, then God didn't create it, then, uh, then, then it's, it's in your eyes, but not in God's eyes. The text says that, that not only was God eternal, not only was he sovereign uh, in this, uh, because he is a sovereign God, uh, but, but the Bible says that in this text that he was unsearchable. Uh, the text says that uh, his understanding is unsearchable. Not only is God able, but, uh, but God uh, will do it. He says God always knows all things. Uh, Psalms 45 and 3 says, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is what? Unsearchable. And I want to suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, that we serve a God that there is no full understanding of just who he is. And I want, to I want us to understand that his works are wonderful, his powers are, are mysterious, and, and, and yet, yet, y'all, only God can do it. Listen, that reminds me of old hymn of the church. Uh, uh, I used to hear the saints sing, God moves in mysterious ways, his wonders uh, to perform. He plants his feet in the sea and rides on every storm, deep in unsearchable minds of never failing skills. He treasures up his bright designs and he works his sovereign will. Listen, judge not the Lord for his feeble sense, but trust him in his grace. Behind all frowning providence, he hides a smiling face. I want to argue, my brothers and sisters, we can trust God even when we cannot trust ourselves, when we don't understand it. Listen, we've got to know that we serve a God that is unsearchable. But listen, my brothers and sisters, I want to, want to suggest that not only is he sovereign, uh, not only is he unsearchable, uh, but listen, I, I want to uh, conclude the matter, is that he is our source of our strength. And I want to suggest, my brothers and sisters, uh, verse 29 declares that God is our, is our strength and uh, he gives power uh, the text says to the faint and to those who have no might he increases 
strength. Uh, God is not stingy with his strength. Uh, he is willing to share wherever he makes it available. But, the, but there are some conditions here. Uh, the text says uh, uh, he gives power to the faint and to those that have no might. He increases their strength. And, and, and I, I know there are those that says uh, that, uh, uh, that God helps those that help themselves. Uh, but, you know, the, the truth of the matter is that phrase is not in the Bible. That's not a, a biblical text. Uh, but I, I, I want to argue it's actually just the opposite. When you cannot do God in your weakness, if you give it to God, God will exchange your weakness and give you his strength. Oh, blessed be God. I'm, I'm so thankful, my brothers and sisters, for the, for the strength of God that he declared to this thing that I, I recognize you. I know that when you can't do, I want you to make yourselves available uh, for a God that is able to handle it on your behalf. Uh, uh, just, 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 to, just today, I forgot to uh, hook my phone up last night and and, uh, and noticed that the battery was run down and and, uh, and, and 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 discovered that if I if I put it on, yeah, 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 the pad uh, that it will rejuvenate that that the source will be applied back to the battery. But but listen, can I can I caution you there, y'all? I can't put it on the battery pad for two minutes. And, but I got to leave it there a little while. And the longer I leave it there, the stronger the battery will renew. I just want to argue, my brothers and sisters. God says, I got, I will strengthen you. Uh, listen, I just want to argue, y'all. God says that I will give you strength. Matter of fact, if you go and read further in this text, he says, not only will I give you strength, he says, but I will renew your strength. He says, I got, I got stuff that you had even experienced yet. And, and I, I don't want to suggest y'all, sometimes we become tired and weary, and sometimes even as Christians, uh, if we tell the truth, we too become tired and weary. But all oh, my brothers and sisters, if we will give God our weakness, if, if we turn over that that we can do, God is faithful and he's able to bring us to it. The Bible says that uh, he, he declares unto them, that, that my God is, is, is able, he, he offers his strength unto us. But notice, my brothers and sisters, uh, that God won't force it upon us. We've got to yield it unto us. Because I know sometimes, y'all, that we think that we can do it all. But, but, but listen, uh, if you can go on and God will let you go on in your own self-sufficientness. Uh, but, but you will come to recognize that you need a power that's greater than you are. Uh, he, he argues here uh, in this text uh, that, 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 that I don't care how strong you are. He said God increases strength. But notice he says that even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. He says that I know that what it looks like that ought to be there. He says, but one day it too will fall shattered. It too will not accomplish what it desired to be. And I want to suggest, my brothers and sisters, uh, that God says that uh, that I got a I got a a weapon even for that. For he concludes in the last verse, he says, but they that wait upon the Lord. And I'm so glad, my brothers and sisters, that he, he declares it this way. He doesn't say uh, that he's going to do it uh, by September the 1st, but he says that I'm going to do it at my time. They that wait upon the Lord, the Bible says they shall renew their strength. Uh, but I, I would argue, my brothers and sisters, he says, but the challenge here is, is that we got to wait on God. Uh, Psalms 27 and 14 says, wait on the Lord uh, and be of good courage and be, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, upon the Lord. And Galatians 6 and 9 says, and let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we don't lose heart. I just want to suggest, my brothers and sisters, God will strengthen us. God himself will be our strength. Psalm 34 uh, Psalm 130 verses 5 and 6 says, I waited for the Lord, and my soul do wait it, and in his word do I hope. Listen, if nothing else, I trust God's word. I'm going to wait 
uh, just what his word said. He says, for my soul waited for the Lord, and more than they that watch for the morning, for I say that more than they that watch for the morning. Lamentations 3, 25 and uh, uh, 26 says, the Lord is good unto them that wait on him, uh, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should have hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. I just want to encourage somebody is that God has in store for all of us, but, but I, want, I want to suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, is that we've got to wait on the Lord. And, and notice here, y'all, and, and in my, in my final word here, he says he's my source here, but, but notice here he says, uh, this is what he's going to do when you, when you wait. He says, uh, number one, you're going to mount up with wings as eagles, son. And uh, he says that, you know, sometimes when, when you wait on God, uh, God has a way of showing up. And, and y'all, sometimes God will just show up in the midst of your showdown. So, sometimes uh, God doesn't move you out of it. He, he just shows up in the midst of it. And, and uh, he gives this illustration of an eagle, mother eagle, uh, when an uh, eagle that's uh, in trouble, she just jumps down and, and rescues them and, uh, at, my, at our home. Uh, in the, the front raptors of our house, uh, every year uh, uh, birds make their nests there, and uh, and we see them as they move from eggs to uh, little 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 birds, and and, and then uh, it's interesting to watch them try their wings, and and, uh, and 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 every year since we've been there, practically uh, they built a nest there, and, and they go, and you can see them as they flap and. and, and, and and, and sometimes they go and take a little dip, and then they go back to the nest, and uh, perhaps they're just experiencing and they're tired from from their trials, and 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 and, and, and yet uh, the mother will come at a certain time, and she will provide for them. But y'all, no, there comes a time uh, when the mother bird stop coming to provide, and she allows them that they may go and fetch their own, and uh, and you can see them uh, in their size. They move, they'll move from the front of the house to the back of the house. And we, we know now when they move to the back, uh, they are preparing, they're searching on their own. And I want to argue, my brothers and sisters, every now and then, God, God didn't come when we want him to. Sometimes God waits to the very last moment and he'll show up and, and, and listen, y'all, I, I, I know for myself, I can, I can testify with this one, y'all, that sometimes God shows up in the 23rd hour. Sometimes God shows up while you're still asleep, but God will show up, y'all, in the midst of it. He says that they shall mount up with wings as eagles and God gives you a way of escape from it all. But then he says that uh, secondly, he says, they shall run and not be weary. And I want to suggest, y'all, that sometimes, y'all, that God would allow you to run through it then. Yeah. Sometimes there are circumstances of life that, that God will give you enough strength that, that you'll be able to run through it. That sometimes he doesn't always pick you up and deliver you, but sometimes he'll give you energy to run through it. That, and listen, y'all, and sometimes when you're running, it feels like you ain't making no way. Sometimes when you're running, it doesn't feel like you're making any progress. Have you ever gotten on your, your treadmill and, and, and you know you're not going nowhere? You know you're stationary, uh, but, but you keep on running in the same place. But sometimes it feels like you're not doing it. And, and, and sometimes you need something to motivate you. And, and oftentimes when I, uh, when I get on the treadmill, I, 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 I used to get, in, get on it uh, as something is on TV, and I, and I watch the show while I'm uh, while I'm on the treadmill, and I learned this from from another preacher, and and uh, and it helps to keep you focused. It, it helps to keep you focused while you're running, and and, and 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 at the end of the program, you would at least run 30 minutes, or you would have at least run an hour, and you're focused based upon what you see up ahead. I just want to argue, my brothers and sisters. God got something ahead of us. And listen, all you got to do is to keep on running. Listen, God's got you. He knows the energy you need. He knows what you what it will take to get you to your place. Uh, but listen, I just want to encourage you to keep on running. But listen, y'all, sometimes God doesn't swoop down and deliver you. Sometimes God don't run you through it. But the text says, finally, uh, he says they may walk. Help me somebody. 
and not fainting. That's what I remember, my brothers and sisters. Sometimes, y'all, God will let you walk through this thing. You know, one interesting thing on trivia, and uh, 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 I learned this in scripture, when you uh, on the trivia, they teach you when you come to a point of, of finishing, you don't stop and jump off, but you decrease it level by level until you get to the point where you're just walking. You're walking and you slow your pace down, and you slow your pace down, and then you're able to walk right up. They said, God, God in his own way, he's working out some things that God will just let you walk your way through. They said, I heard David say, uh, yeah, Lord, I walk through the valley of the shadows of death. David said, I don't have to get in no hurry. I don't have to worry about it. Why? Because thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I want to suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, that, that God is sovereign. That, that, that God is, is, is in his own way unsearchable. God, our God, uh, is the source of our strength. And whatever it is that you're going through, I encourage you, turn it over to Jesus and let him make it out. Make it right in your life. <clears throat> God and Father, we come in Jesus' name. We love you. We thank you. We praise you, God, for your rich and many blessings. Forgive us when we failed you and come short of your glory. And God, minister to us in this time of invitation. And we'll be faithful to give you glory, honor, and praise. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, God is real. I can feel it in my soul. Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.